Rochelle White, welcome today. Adelika Adeniye, welcome back. Sheikh Gunfatumo. Evening, everyone. From mediocrity to a national hero is what we're going to be talking about today. A testimony of a uh, lady that thought that she was just a mediocre, and now she had gone from that state of mediocrity to being a national hero in her country. And um, you've been seeing her almost every day because she, she's always present most of the teachings here, but you never know that she's a, she's a high achiever like, uh, like what you will hear today. So I want to present to you the testimony of uh, Olena Stebeska. But Olena is her name, but before I, will, I introduce her to you, I would like us to go and share the link. So let's quickly go and share the link to this transmission. Let's go share the link, please. Let's go share the link. So once we have shared the link, we'll be ready to speak. We'll be ready to introduce the hero that we have for today. Let's go share the link and we'll introduce the hero of the day to you. Okay, you know a lot. You know her. You know her. You remember? She's always here with me. Always here for the program. Добрый день, Олена. Добрый вечер. Добрый вечер, пастор. Добрый вечер усім. Я рада. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, pastor. Good evening, every one of you. I'm so happy to be here today. Я рада сьогодні поділитися своєю незвичайною історією життя мене як звичайної людини. I want to tell you my story. This is my story as an individual and my testimony of what the Lord has doing with me and how He has transformed my life. І все почалося, моя цікава історія мого життя почалося з того, як я попала в церкву посольства Боже. My my un unbelievable, incredible, incredibly interesting story started uh, when I got to the embassy of God Church. А мені 37 років, я вчилася в далекому селі на окраїні України, в якому жило близько 300 людей. I am uh, I'm 37 years old. And I was born in a very remote part of Ukraine, uh, uh, in a village, small village, one of the smallest villages in this country. Only 300 people live in, my, in the village where I was born. Я ходила в школу, я добре вчилася, я була стараною, але я відчувала, що я не реалізована людина, і мені постійно хотілося вирватися кудись. So uh, I studied. I went to school, studied well. Uh, but I always did, felt that, you know, I needed to develop myself, I needed to be fulfilled. I also finished my music school well, and the first place I was able to get out of it was the music school. So, after I finished high school, I went to a musical school, a special musical school, where I finished, and then from there I went to a musical university. І це була перша моя вихід з села, це було невеличке місто в Львівській області, і там я теж непогано вчилася. Ну, я була за, за урядною людиною, яка все ж таки закінчила якось з горим пополам це училище, і ще й отримала червоний диплом. <laughs> so I went, I mean, thanks to the fact that I got uh, admitted to that college, musical college, I was able to leave my village, my small village, and so my admission uh, and my education and admission to the college became my mm, my opening to out of my village to a bigger town and a small big a small town a, a small town but a little bit bigger than my village. І коли я закінчила музичне училище, все одно мені не хотілося повертатися назад додому. У мене був вибір або повернутися назад працювати в музичній школі в трошки більшому містечку, або поступати далі. І далі я ризикнула поступити в місто Київ в консерваторію. So eventually I got admitted to a conservatory, so conservatory uh, that is the highest musical school in the capital, in Kiev, where we are right now. І я поступила 
Але те, що у мене був червоний диплом, нічого не означало. Тому що, коли я поступила, я зрозуміла, що я абсолютно дуже невідомий рівень і знань. І на фоні інших людей, які туди приїжджали з різних куточків України, я була практично останньою. Yeah, I was like the one of the worst students in the university uh, because even though I tried in my village, in my village I was the best, but when I came to the university in the city, I was the, almost one of the worst students. І мені було дуже важко, тому що мотивації і такої таких навиків, які я могла себе сама себе заставити і працювати над собою, у мене не було. І також, коли вже вищий навчальний заклад поступають люди за 20 років, вони вже тоді самі відповідальні за те, що вони роблять. Тому мені було дуже важко і можливості так вчитися, як я навчалася в такому ритмі в своєму маленькому містечку, мені теж не було. So in the university, in the conservatory, conservatory I was very, very, it was very, very difficult for me because that's the highest musical uh, university you could ever imagine. And uh, the best are always from all, uh, all, all universities come there to study. So things were very difficult for me. I really needed some divine intervention. І е, саме тяжким було те, що із-за того, що в мене не було можливості, в мене було таких навиків характеру, які б могли долати труднощі різні, я відстала, і я, в мене рівень моєї гри, я була піаністкою, дуже понизився, він став навіть нижчим, ніж тоді, коли я поступила. І в мене, в мене почалася велика депресія, тому що я не бачила виходу. Помогти також не було кому підказати, що в мене щось вийде. Оскільки я була невіруючою людиною, то я теж вже змирилася з цим приговором, що я вже все. So, because I was I couldn't I was doing my best studying, trying my best in the university and I couldn't cope and I couldn't just do good enough. Uh, because of that, I you know, I was I entered into dep depression. So, I slipped into depression and uh, because I was not a believer, I was in Kiev, uh, but I was I didn't know the Lord, I didn't know God and I was only depending on my on my my efforts and my efforts were not enough. Але в той час Бог, напевно, бачив, що зі мною недобре. І е, я познайомилася з одною дівчиною, спілкувалася, і вона мені вперше розповіла про пастора Сандея і про церкву посольства Боже. Ну, оскільки я е, була невіруючою в плані такому, як е, наші, більшість в нашій країні католики чи православні, ну, я два, роки, два рази в рік ходила в церкву, ну, можна сказати, що я себе вважала атеїсткою, тому що я не вірила, що, щось, що Бог є насправді. Yeah, I was I, like an atheist or like, uh, yeah, somebody who didn't even know there was God. I never even knew there was a concept like God. So I was raised up in a place, in a family where people didn't, didn't recognize God. And even though there was, uh, we had a, an Orthodox church in our village, but it more, was more, more like for tradition. So you go there two times a year for Easter and for Christmas and for uh, New Year. Uh, but nothing really, you know, it didn't really make, make, make any meaning to me. But then I met a lady in the university that was a member of the Embassy of God's Church. And he start, she started, you know, ministry, ministering to me. Вона мені дуже багато розповідала про церкву, і е, я, звичайно, не, ну, я зацікавилася, але я не, риз, не ризикнула іти. І в один прекрасний день е, ще до мене почали приходити в гості інші студенти, які були з іншої церкви. І вони мене, мені читали Біблію, е, я вже в такій депресії була, що мені було все одно. Я нічого не розуміла, вони приходили, читали, я просто слухала, і один раз вони кажуть, давай, ми помолимося. А помолимося за що? Я готувалася до сесії, і... Е, хотіла здати екзамен. І вони мені кажуть, давай ми помолимося, щоб ти здала, отримала п'ятірку. Для мене це було із області фантастики, тому що в консерваторії на п'ять буквально ну, дуже важко було здати якийсь екзамен, попри те, що я готувалася. І що ви думаєте? Я мала п'ять. You know, so what, I was always attending some of the meetings that these people were doing. Uh, I was, you know, indifferent, just standing there, sitting down there with them in their fellowship. But one day, Some, one of them just said, you know what, you, you, know, you want to, you know, let's pray for you because you are always scared about these exams and about your, you know, your schoolwork. You know, God could do some miracles for you. And uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, if you want, pray. I have always worked out, but nothing really worked for me. And then they prayed for me. Could you believe it? I never got 100% in my musical school or any of my subjects. I was always one of the last 
And after their prayers, I got 100% for the first time in my sub in any of my subjects. I knew that, wow, these people are serious. They sure know God. Да, я тоді зрозуміла, що насправді ж Бог напевно є, якщо це таке чудо сталося зі мною. І е, ці дівчата просили мене поїхати на християнську конференцію. Ця конференція була в Москві. І в Москві ми поїхали в Москву з цією моєю подружкою, яка теж мені розповідала про посольство Боже і про пастора Сандея. І, звичайно, вони були не з нашої церкви, і Надя, як звали цю дівчину, вона мені каже, чотири роки тому до нас приходив Ельдар Мірзоєв, який нам розповідав про пастора, про Бога, і він тут десь у Москві, давай ми його знайдемо і поїдемо до нього. Я, каже, і нам мені сказала таку фразу, якщо ти хочеш дійсно пізнати Бога, то поїхали зі мною. І ми отак ризикнули, поїхали вночі в іншій країні, двоє дівчат, і поїхали шукати цю церкву, де ми все-таки знайшли на нічну молитву церкву, яка була дочірня від посольства Божого, там був пастор Альдар Мірзоєв. So she, she was still not willing to go to the Embassy of God Church, and she was not religious, she didn't believe, but she, she discovered that God was with these people, but, but she was not enthusiastic about coming to the church. But then uh, they had a conference in Moscow, and this other lady that was always inviting her to the church uh, told her about, the, about our church in Moscow, that we have a church in Moscow. And because the pastor there was a young man and, you know, he's the one that witnessed to them. It was exciting and, you know, interesting young guy. And they were unbelievers. <laughs> one of them was a believer, one of them was an unbeliever. <laughs> so they decided to go and look for the young pastor there that we had in, in the other country, Moscow. And uh, two, I mean, midnight, it, it, it was Friday and the guy was holding, conducting night prayer. All night prayers in the Embassy of God, they do all night prayers every Friday. So they at 11 o'clock or so in the night, they went and saw this pastor in the church at 11. Да, і ми їхали в чужій країні, шукали е, різним транспортом. Ну, ми пройшли такий тернистий шлях, поки ми туди попали. І все ж таки, е, я туди попала. І на що я звернула увагу? Звичайно, до 6 години мені було важко видержати там з Допустимо, тому що я багато чого не розуміла. Але коли ми прийшли ближче і цей пастор з його дружиною за мене помолився, я там покаялася, у мене таке враження, що в мене великий груз з плечей кудись дівся. І е, я зразу всередині відчула, що цю проблему, яка мене мучила, зв'язана з моїм професійним е, некомпетентністю з цієї трагедії, я відчула, що, що Бог може її вирішити. І в мене, як всередині, появилися якісь нові сили, щоб продовжувати далі, все одно не здаватися, і все одно е, ну, грати, і шукати можливості, і вірити, і все ж таки, і, ну, що в мене є можливість виправитися. So I give my life to the Lord that night prayer, uh, that, that, that night in another country. We had to go to another country to get saved in the daughter church of the Embassy of God Church. And, um, you know, the pastor there and the wife, they prayed for me. I received the Lord and, um, you know, we got saved. And uh, then, you know, supernaturally, I began to have faith that I was going to finish my university and that I was going to be able to cope with the conservatory education. And, uh, you know, just supernaturally, even with, without the pastor knowing what my question was or my need was, just by accepting the Lord uh, sincerely in my heart and by truly getting the born again and regenerated, you know, I got the grace, I got the anointing to be able to f uh, further my education and be able to study well. From then, everything became easier for me. І я почала з новими силами працювати над собою, і почала... у мене зразу мій педагог по фортепіано сказала, ти почала грати, як ніби у тебе музиці якась духовна, що з тобою сталося. І я почала, у мене все краще і краще, я почала іспити на п'ятірки здавати. До державних іспитів за два роки, коли я закінчила п'ятий курс, я з останньої вирвалася вже в першу. Мої вчителі і професори не могли б And they said, well, you know, what happened to you? It's like you woke up from some slumber. And uh, from being the last student in this class, I became the first student.
Казав, щоб я походила туди. І вже в той час, я, коли я не хотіла до цього, вже цю подругу свою я сама почала тягнути. Кажу, Надя, давай підемо в церкву. І ми... я не відставала, поки ми не пішли. І коли я прийшла, я зразу... вона мені ще сказала, ти дивися, тому що у пастора такий акцент, ти його можеш не зрозуміти. А я зразу все зрозуміла, і мене дуже захопила така мудрість, коли пастор говорив, як він може читати Біблію і так тлумачити для свого життя. І мене таке враження, Мені стало, що я зразу це все розумію, і мені хотілося все більше і більше. So, uh, immediately we go to Kiev, of course, I understood exactly that I needed this God. So I went to uh, Embassy of God. Uh, somebody told me that you be careful, because Pastor Sunday uh, is, you know, he has an, he's an African, so he has an accent. He has an, Af uh, an accent when he speaks Russian language. And I said, but when I got to the church, I didn't see any accent. I understood everything. And I was totally overtaken by the wisdom by which, uh, with which pastor was speaking. And that wisdom was what attracted me. And that wisdom is what made me to stay back in the church. І, звичайно, мені найбільше мене захопило, коли пастор говорив, що в Біблії є таке слово, написано, що послідні стануть першими. І ви будете головою, а не хвостом. І я тоді вже мене ніхто не міг уже переконати, що я коли-небудь вернуся в ці останні свої гірші такі стан, якому я була, я вже всередині розумію, що я буду першою, якщо я буду трудитися, якщо я буду використовувати ці принципи, які пастор вчить, що можна бути досягти успіху з Богом, що не просто ходити в церкву, а можна стати людиною в житті, прославляти Бога. І я знала, що ну, я вже всередині відчувала, що в мене це буде. Тоді в мене в планах з'явилося поступити в магістратуру, потім аспірантуру, і в мене все більше і більше виходило. Пастор говорив speaking about Uh, the, you know, the message he preached the first day I went there, he was talking from uh, Deuteronomy 28, that you will be the head and not the tail, and first and not the last, I still remember that. And then I just knew it, that, yeah, this message is for me because I'm the one that used to be the last in my class, <laughs> and I will be the first. I will not just be the first, I will finish my first degree, and I will go to the second degree, I will leave my mates behind, and I will go for my PhD, and I will get my PhD, and I will become a professor, and I will, you know, do everything that I need to do to, to, you know, to become the head, because this scripture is for me. And I just knew that, you know, this is my destiny, and that's exactly what happened to me. And, of course, I finished my magistrature successfully, then I went to the aspirantur, and I was working on the higher training training at the university. І все було добре, я собі вже стала жити в комфорті. І тут пастор Сандей у 2009 році оголосив лідерську школу, яка називалася «Творці історії». Тому це те, що відбувалося. Я почав приїхати до церкви, приїхати до церкви, і все було добре. Я вийшла мою першу дитину, вийшла до моїх мастерів, вийшла моїх мастерів, і потім вийшла до університету, щоб робити моїй ПІХД. І коли я почала навчатися в аспірантурі, мені теж стало важко. Стало важко чому? Як я робив мій ПІХД програм, все became tough again. That was too much for me. The program, the demand was too much for me. А було важко в тому, що оскільки я практик, я більш піаністка, то висловлювати свою думку і писати в мене навиків не було. І, звичайно, оскільки в мене таких внутрішніх і навиків, і характеру не було до самодисципліни, і, відповідно, конструктивного, стратегічного, і креативного, і аналітичного мислення, то я вже застрявала, тому що підходив час уже закінчення, а в мене ще дисертація була не готова. І в той час якраз пастор оголосив про лідерську школу. Тому я був спробував в моєму університеті, робив моєму ПІХД, I was so lucky because Pastor Sunday start, you know, started you know, opening his uh, discipleship and mentorship group to everybody. So he announced that everybody could now become a member of his mentorship team. And we needed to give an exam in the church and pass the exams. So I gave the exam, passed the exam. And, uh, uh, and so that's how I joined Pastor Sunday's mentorship team. Так, і я тоді попала до пастора Сандея в домашню групу. 
я зразу зрозуміла, що ці мої статуси і що я досягла до цього часу, це абсолютно нічого не означає, тому що, незважаючи на диплом, незважаючи на якийсь статус і вищу освіту, як я раніше думала, що ми можемо стати особистістю, якщо у нас є диплом червоний, якщо у нас є відповідна робота, якщо у мене є там кандидатський, то це мені допоможе. Тут я зразу зрозуміла, що це абсолютно ніякого значення не має, тому що особистістю, в якої був би стержень, якого і були б цінності, принципи і відповідні навики, я на той час абсолютно не була. А this point was already uh what do you call it? Uh a lecturer assistant or what do you call them? Uh an assistant lecturer. I was already employed in the university as a an assistant. I was a lecturer in the university be doing, doing my PhD and lecturing at the same time. But when I got to Pastor Sunday's group, mentorship group, I discovered that I didn't know anything at all. I discovered that I, I, it's like, I never went to school at all. The kind of wisdom and the kind of depth that Pastor was giving out, all the kind of things he was talking about. I mean, here I was sitting, someone who finished first class, uh, you know, first degree, second degree, doing my PhD, lecturing in the university, But when I, the more I listen to Pastor Sunday, the more I discover that, I, the more I discover how fully, I mean, how empty I was compared to the things that he was teaching us. I was absolutely empty in the middle, without principles, without anything. And I understood that the diploma will not help me to live. And Pastor started to teach us how to be a person. So the group was a system of forming a person. In what it consisted? Ми кожен місяць збиралися, пастор давав нам домашні завдання, давав такі питання, яких ніяка вища школа, ніяка аспірантура нам у світі не дає. Тому що ці питання стосуються життя свого. Ці питання, як стати об'ємною особистістю, як бути людиною принципу, як жити відповідно до покликання Бога, як стати успішною і бути головою, а не хвостом. Um... You know, it was when I met Pastor Sunday, I had met him, I was a member of the church, but I didn't know him so closely because it's one thing to know Pastor from the distance. It's another thing for you to be discipled by him. So at this point, I was being discipled by him and like in his team, in a team of like, you know, just eight, a few people, like 800 people. So we group 50-50 people in each group. And um, uh, he was discipling us and that's when I discovered that Wow, <laughs> so much in this world that I didn't know. So I, in our country here and in most countries of the world, you are taught that what you need to be successful is to be educated, is to finish university, to have a certificate. Uh, maybe if you have first degree, it's good, but if you have second degree, if you have PhD, ooh, that you are respected basically in any society. And, but in our society, if you, are, if you have reached that level, you are supposed to be respected. And if you are a lecturer in the university like I was, you are already above average. You are already doing well. But when I met Pastor Sunday, I discovered that all those things don't have anything to do with real life. I discovered that for you to really be, the, or to be a ruler of life and to reign in life and to be the master of your life, and to, be, to even understand what life is all about, for you to know uh, what makes life life and how to live life, that there are actually principles that guide life and that there are some uh, laws that life, life is built on. I never knew that there are laws that life is built on. I never knew that life is guarded by any laws at all. What do we know? I only knew that, okay, go to school, If you are a believer, go to church, go to work, get some promotion in your work, you know, get a good career, grow in your career, you know, make good money, be respected in the society. But I never knew that life was predictable. And I never knew that you could actually construct life the way you want it to be. And that you could actually become a master over life. And that you could actually manage life. And you could actually live through life, not blindly, not just, you know, uh, groping through life. But you could actually live through life with your eyes wide open. That you could live a conscientious life, knowing exactly what to do, 
what you want in life, how to make it happen, and you could actually shape your life. You could actually shape your destiny. I never knew that you could actually become the owner of life. You could become the, the manager of life, the director of your own life, and you could actually rule in life, manage things in your life. You know, those are the kind of things that pastor began to teach us, and it began to work out, and I began to discover that, okay, so it's one thing to be educated, it's one thing to get all the degrees, but still not understand life at all. So I had all the degrees, but I never understood life. No understanding of life whatsoever. And that this man was teaching me life, how to understand life, how life works, how life is supposed to operate, how life is supposed to work, and how to even give life to other people. That's when I discovered that I was zero and that I was empty, and that I didn't even have any understanding. I was living a parallel world. And that the kind of life that the whole society teaches us, what they teach us to do in this world, is just full of, it's just full of deception. It's just a lie. They just make us to become like robots and make us to become like uh, sheep, like cattle, that just follow some, uh, some predetermined uh, you know, instructions, predetermined order, and just living like the, if somebody else has told us to live, not the way we want to live, not the way we uh, as men to live, that there is a way that we have been created to live that we were never told about. Дала одну історію, як я прийшла перший раз на домашню групу. Я така людина, що я не публічна, я боялася виступати, я боялася вириватися вперед. Мій звичайний стан – це десь закритися, сидіти самі, ну і щось робити, але так, щоб мене ніхто не чіпав, і щоб людей поменше біля мене було. Я абсолютно, в мене були відсутні лідерські якості. Я боялася говорити, тому що я не міла висловлювати свою думку. І один раз, коли ми прийшли до пастора на домашню руку, це була одна із перших, він сказав таку фразу, яка мене вразила на всі інші домашні групи. Він сказав, тут безініціативність і пасивність наказуємо. В той час, як у нас в країні є така, така мудрість, в кавичках, яка звучить як ініціатива наказуємо. Тобто той, хто буде вириватися десь вперед, того завжди, той, ти повинен сидіти тихо. Це наслідки комуністичної системи. Але у пастора було все навпаки. І я десь сиділа в кінці залу, де 40 чи 50 людей, я думаю, боже мій, я пропала, якщо я щось не зроблю, що я тут буду робити, я, куди я попала, як мені, як мені стати непасивною і ініціативною. І після цього я вирішила, щоб собі полегшити життя, слідуючи раз сидіти, приходити, приходити швидше і сідати вже ближче. Якщо я буду піднімати руку, якщо мені раптом буде щось сказати, то вже мене пастор почує пошвидше тоді. Uh, she, she was telling a story about how Pastor Sunday's mentorship group works. So she said one of the laws in Pastor, under Pastor Sunday's mentorship is that uh, you are not allowed to be, pass, to be laid back, passive, and to be, no, to be just laid back. So she said, but it was my nature, I'm kind of withdrawn. I'm a withdrawn kind of person. I'm quiet, and I like to be silenced and hidden. Uh, I would do my work, but nobody should touch me. So my principle of life is that I do what I need to do, so nobody should come near me, nobody should touch me. I never, you know, I'm never proactive. I'm never a, uh, an upstart. I'm never a proactive in anything. I'm never proactive in anything. And I'm always hidden. Just being average. I like just to be in the middle of the park just in the middle of the park just just so that nobody notices me i'm just mediocre just somewhere there you know i'm not first not last but i'm just okay and, and uh, so that's the kind of life that i used to lead but in the group of pastor sunday after my first class i discovered that you are punished when you a class passes and you did not say anything so if you have been mentored by pastor sunday if you go to any of his class and you did not show any initiative, and you did not become any I mean, proactive in any way, you did not uh, become a, an upstart, you, because he said for you to win in your life, for you to rule in life, you must be an upstart. So this is one of the principles that Pastor Sunday teaches. So every day when you come to his group, you must find a way to win, or to, to strive, and to you know, shoot yourself forward and be able to win. 
because he tells you that if you don't win, if you cannot win in this classroom, this is like a master class, it's like a training ground. If you cannot win here, if you cannot show initiative here, if you cannot, you know, break through and get your way here, you will never be able to do it in a society. Because in the society, is if is evil. In the society, people want, are there to kill you. People are there to harm you. People are there to stop you. People are there to crush you. People are there to, you know, to destroy your destiny. So if you are not a fighter, that you will never make it in life. So learn all those skills. So when Pastor Sunday's mentorship, it's not just about knowledge. It's not just giving you knowledge. It's giving you life practical skills, practical skills that you need to win in life, practical skills that you need to reign in life. So it will say anybody that does not you know, that shows some qualities that will make you to be crushed in the world, that will make you to be, you know, to be a loser in the world, it, will, it wants to remove that from you right now. And it's your opportunity to be trained and to get rid of those things and to become better. So I never spoke in classes. I, I was never speaking in classes. I never answered questions you know, openly or show initiative. So because I got punished the first night, the first class, because I didn't speak anything, and that means if you get punished like three times like that in a row, you lose the mentorship opportunity in Pastor Sunday's group. So I didn't want to get kicked out from the school, from the mentorship team. I didn't want to lose opportunities for, to learn from Pastor Sunday. So I knew that I needed to break myself and, you know, remake myself. Even though some people have an excuse and say that I'm an introvert, I have a, uh, I'm withdrawn, that's my nature. But what Pastor Sunday is teaching us is that, you know, <laughs> nobody will ask what your nature is when you are there in the world with the, with the, jackals and with the jackals and with the with the lions and with the leopards and with the you know with the animals of this world they will tear you in pieces nobody cares what your what what your temper temperament is so that so i knew that i needed to overcome myself and be strong so for you to win in life you need it, you need to be strong for you to win in life you need to be an obstacle nobody cares it's, it's, a, it's an open field for the whole world. Everybody is the same. So you need to turn your weaknesses to your strength. Never you be comfortable with your weakness. Weakness, that's one of the things we have been taught. Don't ever be comfortable with your weaknesses. You should not say, this my the way I am, that's your say. And then you sit back in your comfort zone. But you must learn to overcome your comfort zone, to turn it around, and to turn your weakness to your strength. And that's what I began to do. Одного разу, коли мені, звичайно, на ці теми, про які у нас говорилися, про принципи життя успішних людей, мені сказати було нічого. І я кожен раз йшла, молилася, думаю, Боже мій, хоч би я, хоч мені щось, якась тема була, на яку я можу хоч щось в голові, щоб лишилося, щоб сказати. І один раз, коли я вже сіла ближче, я вирішила з тим щось зробити, з тим, що я не вискочка. І була тема про великих людей, я пам'ятаю, пастор говорив про його на Себастьяна Баха. А це моя тема, тому що я ж музикант і про нього щось таке знаю. І я пам'ятаю, я так довго тримала руку, щоб мені дали слово, що вона мене вже заболіла. І коли я сказала те, що я хотіла сказати, видержала, ну, я ж могла опустити по своїй природі. І мені вже стало так легше, я зрозуміла, що, ну, що я зможу себе подолати і далі поступово долати себе і, і ставати ініціативною людиною. Uh, so what, but you know, the, the next, uh, even though I was, I used the whole month, it takes a month, every month Pastor Sunday was having a group with us, he was meeting with us. So it took me my whole month, a whole month to restructure myself, to restructure my mind, to restructure my thinking and say, oh, I, do, I become an upstart or I'm so sh shy, I'm so always shy and ashamed of raising my hands out speaking. And I said, I don't even know what to speak. This man is teaching all these subjects. But that day, I, I prayed to God. I said, God, please, you know, let him talk about a topic that I know something about or that I could comment on. <laughs> but, and I was lucky that day because that day, Pastor Sunday decided to use, to, to teach on some great men. And this day, he was teaching about Johann uh, Sebastian Bach. Bach. 
Uh, so, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach was a musician, one of the greatest musicians in the world. And that's my profession. I have, I have a PhD in it. <laughs> so, that just, because I know so much about the man, uh, and so that gave me the boldness. So, that's how I was not kicked out of Pastor Sunday's Zongu, because I could raise up my hand, and I could comment and give all the answers concerning that man. And so, I, well, that's how I began to get myself set free from myself, from my... Uh, shyness from my comfort zone, from my temperament, from my you know laid laid back uh, nature. І так поступово це все почалося. Я почала собі весь час ставитись за ціль, що мені треба бути активною і ініціативною. І я мені я поступово вчилася говорити фразами, конструктивно висловлювати свою думку, не боятися. І мені звичайно в цьому дуже допомогли ці домашні завдання, які полягали в слідуючому. Пастор Сандей кожен раз нам задавав після свого вчення питання. Ці питання стосувалися життя. Наприклад, яка наша ціль, хто я, які в мене здібності, яке моє покликання, що мені подобається робити, що я можу робити через п'ять років, через десять, через двадцять до того часу таких Питання ніколи в житті не чула, і таким чином, коли я думала, як на них відповісти, в мене мислення поступово почало запрацювати. І вже коли такі домашні завдання впродовж року, наприклад, ми робили, я вже зрозуміла, що я вже можу і писати нормально краще, ніж писала раніше, тому що я взагалі не вміла. І це мені також допомогло закінчити і закінчити короткий термін мою дисертацію, яка до того часу я за три роки не могла собі дати раду. Wow. You know, so in Pastor Sunday's uh, training or uh, mentorship, uh, this is not the only thing. So I, thought to, I was taught to be an upstart. And you see me talking now so freely, that's another skill that Pastor Sunday taught us in his training, in his mentorship team. He taught us to be, uh, to be eloquent and to be, to, be, to be able to present our thoughts. Because it says it doesn't matter what you have in yourself, if you're not able to present it and t tell people, nobody's going to be blessed by it. So, you know, in my case, I, I never spoke. I never knew how to speak. I was a, uh, an expert in, in uh, piano playing. So that's, what, that's my profession, music. And uh, but so I was not used to speaking, I just play. And then, but in the Pastor Sunday's home, uh, the discipleship team or a mentorship team, he, he would get every member of the team to speak. And when they speak, he will help everybody to construct their language. He helps you to pay attention to every word, to cons construct your words, your thoughts, you know, to put the thoughts, what words to put first, what words to put last, what pro how to build your construction, I mean, your, 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 your sentences, how to construct your sentences, how to start, how to end, how to put in the beginning, how to... So he actually, word by word, lectured us, trained us on how to get attention of the public, how to get people's attention, how to build our words, how to make an impression, how to speak with, with conviction, how to speak with passion, how to take, uh, you know, to hold an audience, to, 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 to respect our opinion, how to, you know, just, it just, just taught us every single thing, like we never went to school. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing. That's how I, from thinking from somebody, if I had never met Pastor Sunday, I would have kept on thinking right now that I'm never supposed to be a teacher, that I'm no, I'm never supposed to speak, a public speaker, that even though I was teaching in the university, I think I couldn't speak. Even though I, I at that time I was still in the university doing my PhD. And one of the other things that Pastor Sunday would teach you in the mentorship team is to be able to construct your mind, to be able to construct your ideas, to be able to carry forth your uh, conceived ideas and be able to think. It keeps you, makes you to think all the time. And one of the ways for you to, and he has to give, you have to give exam to person every month. So every month, everybody have to write at least 30 pages of work. From 30 to 300 pages of work, you have to submit to Pastor Sunday every month if you are one of his disciples. And there were 800 of us in his, in his a mentorship team. And each one of us are writing to, from 30 to 300 pages every month. 
and there are 800 of us. Multiply 30 pages by 800. Pastor Sunday crosses all these works every month and uh, gives us another one. And then we have to write, read at least three books every month. So there is no way you will remain dull on another Pastor Sunday. There is no way you will not become a word beater. A word beater. There is no way you will not become a word leader. So, but, you know, I had spent three years in my PhD program and I couldn't finish before then. But when I, by the time I spent one year in Pastor Sunday's uh, mentorship team, I was so smart that in one year I just finished my PhD. <laughs> my PhD became so easy. <laughs> she thought I couldn't finish PhD. I was repeating my PhD because I couldn't just get through it. But by, after I went to Pastor Sunday's uh, uh, mentorship team, <laughs> it became so, I mean, I was thinking, what am I doing here in this PhD? It's too easy. I feel like I was doing PhD every month with Pastor Sunday. <laughs> every month of Pastor Sunday's discipleship was tougher than the PhD itself. So that's how we were prepared uh, on the Pastor Sunday. Яка до того мені здавалася чимось таким невідомим і неземним, і непонятно, чи це завершиться коли-небудь чи ні. Я її захистила, і при чому захистила блискуче, тому що навіть мені професорсько викладацький склад сказав, що такого захисту ще в нашій академії не було. Тобто на всі питання мені було легко дуже відповісти. Ну мені самі сподобалося, як це все пройшло. І таким чином я отримала ступінь кандидата мистецтвознавства. Завдяки до <laughs> so she said that uh, uh, I was thinking that I would never finish that PhD program, especially with my musical training. It's so complex and it's so difficult. The average year people spend in PhD here in Ukraine is eight years. It's because it's supposed to be three years, three years to four, four years, but eight years because people just find it tough. They thought, and I thought I would never even finish in eight years. I thought. You know, I would be there forever because I just didn't know how to finish it. But after listening to the pastor, I, did, I finished everything in one year. And it, was, it became the best defense, the best PhD defense in our university. My, the, my professors began to say, ah, what happened? Where did you come from? Where did you get all this wisdom from? This is what that training with Pastor Sunday did to me. <laughs> <laughs> не була, буде правильно з точки зору Бога, якщо я її використаю і перетворю в ресурс. І пастор Сантей дав мені завдання. So I became a PhD holder and a lecturer in the university. Uh, uh, officially I became a lecturer in the university and uh, I became uh, a, a, a don, I became a don uh, and then I became a head of department in the university. So I've been a professor and head of department in the university. And so when I discovered now that uh, all these challenges that I was having with studying and everything, that God was going to use it for good. So pastor has always taught us to, to, uh, to turn all our challenges to our benefits. That every challenge that we ever had is a, is a, is a, is a, is a uh, stepping stone. Uh, yeah, to wherever we are going, that we should turn every uh, problem that we had into our advantage. So after becoming a lecturer in the university and be, you know being a, at the head of department, Pastor Sunday just decided he got another vision that he wanted to produce 500 lecturers, uh, PhD orders from the church, so that our PhD graduates and our own uh, lecturers and professors will be in every university in the country. So we wanted to raise up our own lecturers, our own doctorates, uh, doctorate orders that will invade the university of the country and be able to give guidance to the new coming generation. So uh, and I, took, I decided to take up this challenge uh, to train uh, PhD uh, graduates and to help people to get their masters and to and get into PhD programs. Yep брати команду з людей, які хочуть також поступити в аспірантуру і отримати науковий ступень. Я також написала книжку, яка називається «Стати науковцем просто». Я почала організовувати тренінги, семінари, де я розказувала людям, як здати іспити, як вибрати теми, як вибрати навчальний заклад, як писати статті і як бути спікером наукових конференцій. 
І е, таких людей близько, е, коли ми почали працювати, вже зараз поступило е, близько 10 чоловік, які поступили в аспірантуру. І ми почали також ходити на інші конференції, де ми почали е, принципи, тобто е, в нас в країні є потреба в тому, щоб були правильні теми і проблема з вибором теми дисертації, чому багато людей не захищаються. Але у пастора Сандея є дуже багато літератури і книжок, де він розшифровує на людській мові, доступні для інших людей, ці принципи царства Божого, які можна внести також в науку. І ми почали тим займатися. So, you know, philosophy of the world, but who will come with the philosophy of the kingdom of God and the principles of the kingdom of God, and that we should raise up people from the church, that we should not wait for professors to get saved in the church, we should not wait for the scientific uh, sphere of life to get saved, that we should get, we should raise them up from our church, from our midst. So 500 was the goal, and so I started, you know, training people, so I even wrote a book my experience on how to become a PhD holder, and that becoming a PhD holder is easy. That's the name of my book. So I wrote it and we distributed it. We started helping people from whatever stage they are to finish their first degree, their second degree, and their PhD. So we created a system for, cre for graduating PhD holders who would later on become future uh, prof uh, lecturers in all universities that will bring new culture, new value systems, to the universities of our, of our country. And so, uh, you know, then besides that, all these graduates, as soon as they graduate from their PhD, when they finish their PhD program, and because of the training of Pastor Sunday, we are no more doing PhD for five years, eight years anymore, doing PhD for one year, two years, just because of the kind of quality training we've got from Pastor. And we, our students always become so brilliant that they could do it in one or two years. So we started graduating all these uh, PhD orders, and then we started also using, uh, so we had an association of uh, science, scientists, uh, PhD orders from the church and scientists, so we, have, we created a whole association of Christian PhD, you know, or scientists, so we, we have different topics of all different topics of life that we deal with, and we started doing uh, scientific conferences, that's what they call uh, colloquium, colloquiums and seminars, uh, we started doing uh, all these colloquiums and, and, and seminars huh? Forum. no, and forums and forums, you know, but what, what are these forums? This is where you get professors and policymakers and government and experts in any particular area and then we recommend what law must be enacted in the country to make the country work. And then we give this and submit it as subjects in the so universities, to, to scientific scientific institutions to uh, government uh, parliament and to government you know uh, lawmaking legislative uh, organs and uh, so we started conducting these you know forums and discussion tables round tables uh, all over the country you know just bringing scientific solutions you know but you know we are actually bringing kingdom principles and kingdom solutions but in the name of science and in the the scientific language. So actually most of our graduates, they don't just write some vague uh, scientific topics. Most of our graduates write from Pastor Sunday's books. Pastor Sunday is written over 300 books and all these books are pertaining to life, to real life, not spiritual, not, uh, you know, biblical only, but they're just spiritual, you know, spiritual principles and truth. Uh, and then we take them and convert them into scientific uh, books. So as a scientific book, we, we, we find things much more easier to use Pastor Sunday's topics that he has already developed. Pastor Sunday has developed topics uh, in Russian language in, for every sphere of life, how to, for politics, for economies, for media, for every sphere of life, Pastor has written something. So we who are, who are, who are graduating PhD orders, 
we use his materials like as many as uh, 300 people we use all his books and people don't even know where they are coming from but we quote pastor sunday we say this thing is from pastor sunday in our defenses and the professors couldn't even stand they couldn't understand all this wisdom where we're getting them from за цей час, коли ми почали проводити конференції, ми зробили близько 15 конференцій, і вони виглядали приблизно в таких наукових збірниках, де наші науковці, науковці писали наукові статті. І ці люди, які, наприклад, нашу церкву... Не... А, і тут знаходяться наших людей статті на теми пастора Сандея, але вже на науковій мові. Тобто ці науковці, які, наприклад, не зможуть прийти в церкву чи не знають пастора, вони можуть познайомитися. Музика Ось, і поступово на нас почали звертати увагу інші науковці, до нас, в нашу команду, невіруючі люди приєднюватися. So we, we became the most active uh, association of scientists in the country. So no group of scientists that is so organized and no group of scientists that is so uh, active in providing solutions and providing answers to different questions and problems in the country like us. So because we became so uh, influential that even unbeliever scientists began to join our association. Unbeliever scientists, professors who are not Christians began to come to participate in our colloquiums and our forums and our і за нашу роботу ми отримали за нашу нову генерацію науковців вже такі дипломи, подяки. We we call our administration, we call our movement new generation of scientists, new generation of scientists. And so this the government started giving us certificates, started giving us medals. So these are the medals that we got from the government, recognition of our contribution to the development of Ukrainian society. Це щодо нової генерації. Ще я би сказала про один виток моєї роботи, це наукова робота, завдяки домашній, яка розкрилася в світі. І ще один напрямок, це культура. So apart from uh, being a scientist right now, and I lecture at the university, um, you know, Pastor also taught us through his own groups and, uh, and uh, training to become politicians, to become active in political life of the country. And uh, Pastor Sunday has given us the task of opening a political organization. І я також відкрила громадську організацію, виходячи з того, що я на той час вміла. Це організація називалася Art Creative. Pastor always teaches us that no matter what you do, if people don't know you, you are useless. It's not necessary. If Jesus comes to the world, even if Jesus, no matter how anointed he is, if nobody ever heard about him, it was it's useless coming. So they said we should know how to uh, how to. Um, how to maximize our, 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 our gifts and how to build platforms and how to use our platform to, uh, to uh, catapult ourselves to the national level. That you, anybody that is, that is trained on that Pastor Sunday must be minimum a national hero or, or it must be influential to the national level. So uh, we have to build a structure for that. Some people could build a church for that, some people could build an NGO for that, some people could be, be, build a political movement for that. So I started, you know, an, a, a civil society for that. Yeah, uh, my, my civil society was in the area of culture, entertainment, and reformation of entertainment and culture. 
Оскільки я була музикантом на той раз, і організація теж була зв'язана з музикою, я організувала вокальний ансамбль, він називався «Арт Креатив». І діяльністю... Ми виступали на концертах, ми організовували концерти, і одне із завдань... І також одним із завданням пастора Сандея було знайти можливість співпраці з органами влади. І наша громадська організація, у нас на це називається громадська рада. При будь-якому органі влади, міністерстві знаходиться такий консультативно-дорадчий орган, де можна з владою співпрацювати напряму і приносити її пропозиції, як покращити ту чи іншу сферу. І наша організація також війшла в громадську раду при Міністерстві культури України. Оскільки я була її головою, і я вже була навчена пастором, що всюди треба брати лідерські позиції в свої руки, відповідальність, то при цій громадській раді, при Міністерстві культури, я стала головою комісії. So, my, our, our organization, our uh, civil society became so influential uh, in the country that we were, you know, involved, we were invited to, the, to, uh, to participate in the political process. So we joined, you know, the political process I, and I ended up being the head of a commission in the Ministry of, uh, in the ministry of Culture. Of Ukraine. І наша комісія, по принципу тому, якому пастор нас вчив, що завжди потрібно трудитися, бути прилежним і робити більше, ніж робить хтось інший, навіть якщо це не вигідно. Наша комісія, куди входили відомі діячі культури, народні заслужені артисти, ми почали працювати так, як ніхто не працював. І в результаті того, що ми вирішували проблеми культури, ми проводили круглі столи, куди запрошували міністрів, ми піднімали проблеми культури і в таких галузях, як музичне мистецтво, хореографічне мистецтво, наукова діяльність галузі культури, музична освіта. І одного разу наша комісія проявила таку активність в плані розробки стратегії розвитку української культури. Коли ми побачили, що там є недопрацювання і не внесені певні види мистецтва, де які люди живуть і люди туди не будуть мати можливості бути реалізованими, ми зробили свої пропозиції і провели декілька круглих столів. І за результатами цих круглих столів наші рішення були прийняті і ми внесли поправки в цю стратегію розвитку української культури. Pastor has taught us that no matter anyone that finishes pastor discipleship team, there is no way we will not be first wherever it goes. He has taught us the, the principles of how to win in life, like what he taught you people uh, this week. And in all those principles, he doesn't just teach us, like in, in this program on the Facebook, he's teaching you, but he's not taking exams from you. He's just teaching you and leaving you people to go on your own. But if you are in his mentorship team, you will not survive it. Can you believe it that out of 800 people in pastor's mentorship group in a year, uh, some, up, sometimes up to 200 or 300 are, chased, are dismissed? Because if they are not going to do practical, the pastor will not even allow you to come for the next class. Like here, you are just getting everything for free, right? But if you are here in Ukraine, you will not even be allowed to come for the next broadcast if you, have not, if you cannot produce the fruits of what the last broadcast was. So for example, he taught this week about who wins in life. So he will give you assignment to go and face your vision and calling. So if you are called into politics, or you are called into a social society, or you are called into opening an NGO or civil society, you must open it before next month. If you don't do it before next month, you will never come back again to his team, to his team. you are shares. So because of that, we were all made So, you know, to act on every teaching. Every teaching has to become part of our life. So if it teaches you to win in life, you know, to become, to become an upstart, you must bring a fruit of how you became an upstart. If it taught you that you must become diligent, you must prove what are the things. So anyway, by the time we began to participate in politics and began to participate in the public life of the country, 
we, get, we started getting everywhere. Our people from our team started getting positions to the extent that out of 800 people that were being mentored by Pastor Sunday, 600 of them got into politics, political positions of Ukraine. Why? Because they were applying all these principles to be an upstart, uh, be diligent, be a fighter, uh, be uh, swift, uh, you know, be, you know, be, uh, be persistent and uh, be strategic. All those principles that pastor are taught this way. So we are made to bring them to pass. We are made to actually, so in the sense, there's nowhere we find ourselves, we will not be the head. There's just no, nobody will be able to do better than us because we know exactly what laws to apply. So we do so well that everybody will begin to clamor for us. So even though we, were, we are going to be less qualified by, or we are less experienced, but we do so much, we, and we apply all these principles that everybody else will begin to vote for us and say, these are the ones we want, these are the ones we want. And the laws that we propose become law in the country. Uh, <laughs> У мене вже ці принципи – брати на себе відповідальність, брати лідерські позиції, робити більше на крок, ніж люди роблять. І вони вже стали всередині просто на автоматі працювати. І до нас все більше і більше приєднуються людей. В результаті нашу роботу оцінило Міністерство культури, і я отримала, і ще декілька з моєї команди членів, подяку, почесну грамоту від, міністер... від міністра культури, віце-прем'єр-міністра, міністра культури на той час. Я її не взяла. Ну, я, і ще одне мене внесли. So she said, because of all these principles, I want to add to what Pastor just told you, because of all these principles, Pastor has told us, for example, always take responsibility. That's another principle. All, and another principle he told us is always be a leader. Never ask for pro profit or never ask for reward. Never ask for uh, salary. Always go and serve. Always go and be the least. Always go and do what everybody else doesn't want to do. You know, always work extra, extra hour. Always go extra mile. Always do what everybody else said they don't want to do. You know, all, all, some of these secrets, all these secrets. We, so I was working in the Ministry of, uh, uh, in the, like I said, I was heading a, a commission in the Ministry of uh, Culture. And you know what? The minister noticed me as the best yeah, as, the, as the best person in the ministry. So I got a national award. Uh, I got a national award. Now, remember where I was coming from, from failing in this university, from not being sure that I will finish my school, first degree, and finishing my first degree, and not even sure that I was going to finish my PhD, and finishing it, and become from being shy, not able to talk, but now I was the best in the ministry. The minister recognized me as the as one of the best, and I got the national award for, as one of the best, as one of the best uh, workers in the ministry, with the head of department in the ministry. Then uh, the cabinet of minister, that's like cabinet of ministers, what do you call it? Yeah, I think it's cabinet of minister you say in English as well. That's like the, the government, that's like the, the council of the government, the cabinet of ministers. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Cabinet of ministers also gave me a national award as the government of Ukraine, as one of the leading women in the country. <laughs> Датами діяльності інтернет-портал Жінка Українка теж мене віднесли до однієї з впливових жінок в сфері культури. So there is also uh, an internet, uh, internet, uh, internet, uh, like what do you call it? Rating, yeah, rating, uh, like you know, who are the most influential? Who is who in the country? So now. I am regarded as one of the most influential women in Ukraine in the area of culture mm -hmm. <laughs> and entertainment. <laughs> влади при Міністерстві культури. Мене почали на різні зустрічі запрошувати oh, на конкурсі, конкурсні комісії, де вибирають So so right now the, all the major uh, competitions that people do in the country, you know, like the voice of the nation or whatever, I'm always in the committee. They always invite me to be a judge. I'm always a judge in all the major cultural events, musical events, 
entertainment events in the country. You know, I'm always representing the government and, you know, always participating as a major leader. You know, smallish girl like this, 37, Theresa Sim, 37 year old, but, you know, <laughs> but one of the leading women in the country. Також мене почали запрошувати на радіоефіри. Now I'm, I'm all, almost every week on the television program or radio program. На, да, на телебачення. У мене беруть інтерв'ю, питають точки зору з проблем культури. on daily basis. They want to get my uh, opinion as an expert in questions of uh, culture, entertainment. Також наша команда бере участь в Верховній Раді. Це... And, of, and then I'm also being invited to the national parliament. Right now I'm in the national parliament and uh, working there as an expert in one of the commissions. І е, також і е, люди з нашої команди, які вже поступили в аспірантуру, теж е, приєднуються. Нас and of поважають. Course, we have so many graduates now from the PhD program that Pastor Sunday spoke about, the 500 PhD. And many of them are graduates now, and many of them are all over the country and in the government, in the parliament, and uh, you know, they are being respected as an expert because they have worked better than every other person, they release more papers, they publish more papers than any other person, and they give more recommendations to the nation and to the solution of the country. І що цікаво, про нас навіть дізнаються з соціальних е, мереж і хочуть долучитися до нашої комісії. Наприклад, в нашій громадській раді, самі при міністерстві, всього 35 людей. А зараз у самій моїй комісії чисельність зросла від 11, яких є е, стабільно, до 40 людей. Постійно нові експерти приходять і приходять. Ну, нас поважають, е, нас самі люди хочуть працювати і вирішувати проблеми, тому що вони бачать, що принцип Божої дії, наприклад, And as you know, everybody wants to be in our team. Anywhere where we go to lead a team, to start a program, to lead anything, everybody, unbelievers, everybody wants to come to us because they know that anything we do, we are successful. We're always the leader, always the best. And, you know, everybody just begins to recognize us. Також, крім конференцій і круглих столів з проблем культури, оскільки нас пастор завжди також вчив, що людина, яка не розв'язує, Сама може бути проблемою, тому ми піднімаємо ці проблеми і активно допомагаємо. One of the principles that pastor has taught us is that if you are not busy resolving any problem, a national problem, that you will always be overwhelmed by a problem. So if you are not resolving and chasing after a, okay, so. If you are not chasing after a national problem, if you are not resolving the problem of other people, if you are not busy resolving one problem or, of the, or the other, if you are not busy trying to help other people to resolve their problems, if you are not engaged resolving national problems, issues of the land, issues that concern other people, Satan will overwhelm you with your own problems. You have so many problems, you have so many challenges, either in your health or in your family or with your children or just survival issues. You'll be, you'll be so occupied by, you know, the desire to make a living, uh, to, 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 to put food on the table. You know, you'll be running after bread, bread and butter so much that you will never have time to leave. But if you, if you, if you go ahead, If you begin to live for others ahead of time, if you begin to live for the kingdom, live for other people, you resolve other people's problems, national problems, and you are engaged with that and make that your priority, you will always be ahead of problems. You will never be under problems. You will always be over problems. You are chasing problems. Problem is not chasing you. So either you are going to be chasing after problems in your life or problems will be chasing you. So that is one of the keys to really become a national hero and to become you know, a significant person. Most individuals in the world, they live for themselves. And because they live for themselves, they are overwhelmed like an av with the avalanche of problems. Because they are living for themselves, they are, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are living egocentric lives, they are overwhelmed, they, are, they bury themselves in their problems. And the, the problems begin to chase after them from every direction. They never have time for all 
other people. They are always too overwhelmed with their own situations and their problems. But the key to life and the paradox of life is that you should rather, you know, close your eyes at your own problems and begin to chase after problems of others or problems of nation, problems of your calling, problems of your promised land, problems for the kingdom of God. Begin be occupy resolving problems for God, for his kingdom, for your calling and for your nation, for other people. If you do that, you, God will begin to exalt you, raise you up until you are the one over problems, giving answers to problems, and then, you know, you are never overwhelmed with problems, and that's why God says all other things shall be added unto you. That's how you get, you know, blessed in every direction. You get promoted, you get popular, you get all this kind of recognition that we are talking about. І однією з такою проблем, яка у нас в суспільстві є в сфері культури, це є нереалізація творчого потенціалу і здібності взагалі будь-якої людини, яка зв'язана з творчістю. Ми почали вирішувати, проводячи міжнародні фестивалі. За цей рік ми провели вже таких чотири фестивалі і взяли участь і змогли проявити свої таланти в сфері музичного, вокального, хореографічного розмовленого вже 1200 дітей і дорослих. Тому це теж одна з вирішених проблем, яка і люди до нас йдуть, весь час їм подобається і долучається все більше і більше. Це теж одна із проблем, яку вдалося вирішити на національному і вже на міжнародному рівні. Тому, тому, я зрозумів, що багато людей в нашій країні мають талант, мають потенціал і гіпті. Окей, хлопці. Sorry, sorry, everybody. <laughs> so, one of the things that we've been taught by Pastor is that we should always, by those people who are trained by him, is that we should always look for problems. We should always look for the problems that are existing in the society. So, uh, that's one of the things I did. I discovered that one of the problems in the society is that uh, people are not being, uh, that people are not being appreciated. A lot of people are gifted, but no opportunities for them. A lot of people have talents, no, they don't have any platform to display their platform. So we organized, I organized a competition like for the talents of the country. The nation has talents, you know, like the nation has talents. So a program like that, where anybody could come and display their talents. So I do that every year. Ras Gadu? Uh, Oh, for four times in a year. Yeah, once, once, once a quarter, we do an event like this for the whole country where anybody could come with their gifts, with their talents, with their opportunities. So I am the organizer of that event. It's a national event. And in a year, we had 1,200 people were able to manifest and display their gifts and talents. Да, я хочу сказати на закінчення, показати вам деякі фотографії свої, щоб ви бачили, що я кажу правду. So before I finish, let me show you some of my work so that you will see that I'm telling you the truth. Я так розумію. That is me in one of our scientific science uh, scientific uh, conferences that we organized. So this is the press conference that I was giving after our scientific uh, conference. Це це якою я була, поки попала до пастора домашньої групи. This is me when I just came to pastor. Це мій захист дисертації. This is me when I was defending my PhD thesis. Це я створила ансамбль Art Creative вокальний, і ми на конкурсі. This is me and my musical team, the folk team that I that I created and we are participating in a competition here. Це я на конференції, і це команда науковців, яка була організована. That is me as a speaker uh, with some of the professors and the scientists, uh, you know, providing solutions for the problems of the country. Це наші виступи на конференціях. В руках ми тримаємо з нашою командою книгу пастора Сандея, який ми виступаємо. This is me and my team here after our scientific conference 
on art and entertainment and culture, how to restore the culture and bring the values back. And you know, some of those books are the books of Pastor Sunday that we, we use for that particular conference. Yeah, we are on that, on, uh, organizing another conference, uh, you know, bringing and profiling solutions to the problems of the nation. Yeah, so these are different kind of teachings and conferences and science conferences that we organize all over the country. And this is our, now, this is now our festival, the one I was talking about for the talents. You see the talents and the youth and these are